Hey guys, what's going on? Greenberg Sports here, and today we're going to be bringing you our Stage 4 Team Affinity Rankings. So we're going to be ranking every single player, uh, starting from the best, going to the worst, and uh, just keep in mind that we did these ratings based upon how they are in the meta, meaning um, I'm not rating the cards against each other, I'm rating them more in terms of uh, in terms of what cards are currently available in the game, what cards are going to best help your team uh, right now. So let's jump into our number one rated player, Juan Soto. So uh, right off the bat, jumping out to you is his uh, hitting stats. 125, 119 splits versus righties. 125, 125 versus lefties. So this card is going to be an amazing hitting card. Um, but the questions come in with the... Uh, fielding and speed stats um, so I think in terms of my team you know this card even though I think it's going to be amazing at hitting has a great stance uh, good outfield versatility but uh, overall I don't think this card is as good as say mantle or trout um, but I do think this card could maybe take the spot of my number three outfield over Ty Cobb um, even though that card has 125 contact and 99 speed and 90 power I just don't find I play that well with that card. I'm not sure. Uh, those of you who have that card in the in your lineup, let me know in the comments how you play with that card. But I think this card um, is going to mash. Um, you know, you're going to give up some defensive runs where a card like Ty Cobb would be able to run down some of those balls in the gaps. But I think when you have this card in your lineup, and in terms of the meta, you know, home runs I think is kind of the meta. I think this card is really going to mash for you and... Uh, really produce on the offensive side so uh, I have I don't have this card yet if you have this card in your lineup let me know how you hit with this card um, I've heard really good things about it so I'm working on getting this card into my lineup right now uh, so let's go on to number two so number two on the list we have Jacob deGrom I think this card is really good in terms of uh, his splits 103 stamina 110 hit per nine 125 k's per nine uh, good control at 89, 99 velo, and 95 break. I don't love his pitch mix. Uh, he doesn't have that sinker uh, that a lot of people like, and I find that with his curveball and changeup and slider, sometimes, you know, um, I leave them over the zone a little bit. Um, in terms of the quirks, he does have outlier quirks, so that fastball gets up in the, you know, about 102 range. And uh, against bad players, you're definitely going to be able to gas them up with that fastball. So far, this is the only uh, finest card that I have. Um, and I've done okay with it so far. Um, so I'm interested to hear if you guys have DeGrom uh, in your rotation, if you like him or not. Let me know in the comments. Number three on the list, we're going to Trevor Bauer. Uh, great splits on this card. Uh, you know, it's not a hitter, so there's not like splits versus righty and lefties, but, you know, good per nines in terms of 115 stamina, 124 hit per nine, 117 Ks per nine, and 82 control is a little low, uh, 90 velo, 99 break. Uh, I think this card has a good mix. You know, he's got that sinker, knuckle curve, uh, could be an effective pitch. And uh, I think he's going to be able to locate his pitches well. Great per nine, so he'll keep the other opponent's uh, PCI down. Uh, I'm interested to hear as well with this card, um, if you have him, how he's been for you. I know this card, and there are other cards that are better this, than this card. I think for me personally, and in terms of the meta, I think starting pitching is one of those where there might be like two or three like solid starters for your rotation, but I don't think there's definitively five guys that are like really good. Um, so I think this card, you know, might fit into the meta a little bit um, in terms of starting pitching as well as the next card. Number four on the list is Yu Darvish. So his per nines are a little bit lower than Trevor Bowers. That's why I have him a little lower on the list. 111 stamina, 99 hits per nine, and 102 Ks per nine. 87 control, 96 velo, 99 break. Uh, he's got good pitch mix. He's got, you know, cutter, slider, four seamer, sinker, um, and that 12-6 as well. I think this card is going to be pretty nasty. I'm looking forward to getting this uh, card into my rotation, trying him out, seeing how he is. Um, so, like I said, you know, starting pitching I think is a position of need for me. I'm not sure. Um, if, let me know what your starting five rotation is. Um, would this card be in your rotation? I'm interested to hear. Uh, let me know in the comments. Number five on the list, I'm going with Nick Anderson of the Rays. 
Um, you know, 125 hit per nine, 125 K per nine, uh, perfect splits there. Uh, 98 velo, 99 break. Uh, he doesn't have five pitches. Um, you would like to see that, um, but the fastball, 97. Uh, he's got the sinker, which is an effective pitch, uh, curveball and slider. Uh, there might be, you know, this was a tough decision in terms of uh, relievers. I think there may be, you know, thinking about this, there may be a reliever or two that are similar to him, maybe better than him. Uh, let me know what you think of this card in the comments. Number six on the list, I went with Devin Williams of the Brewers. So again, with the per nines, 125, hit per nine, 125K per nine is perfect there. Uh, 99 velo, 99 break. Um, with the 76 walks per nine and the 81 control, I was a little bit worried about that. That's why I rated this card a little lower than Nick Anderson. Um, but I think, you know, change up primary pitch could be interesting. He does get outlier quirk, I believe, on that. No, he doesn't. Thought he had outlier quirk on that fastball. Uh, still going to get up there at 97 miles per hour. He does have the sinker. Screwball, I actually tested this pitch out in moments. It's kind of a nasty pitch. Um, so I'm interested to hear. You know, I keep asking this question like every single time. But I'm interested to hear if you have this Devin Williams card, uh, what you think of it. Number seven, I went with Liam Hendricks of the Athletics. Uh, again, with the per nines, you're getting great per nines. 125 hits per nine, 125K per nine, 109 walks per nine, 85 control, uh, 86 velo, 99 break. So you're getting definitely better control than a card like Devin Williams. The velo isn't quite as good, and you're still getting that 99 break. Uh, this card, uh, I'm interested to hear what you guys think of it. I think it might be a little bit better than Devin Williams. Not sure. These relievers, these these pitcher cards, I think you kind of have to try them out and kind of see for yourself what you think of them. They're a little bit hard to rate. I think all three of these cards could be uh, good cards in your bullpen. Uh, bullpen, I think, was the uh, reason why these cards, I rated them a little higher than some of the others. was I, I don't think there's, like, you know, solid... There, there are some cards like Gossage, Jansen, uh, you know, some of these cards that are better than these cards and definitely deserve to be in your bullpen, in my opinion. Uh, but I think these cards could definitely fit in, um, especially in my case. I don't have too much success with my starters. I find myself using my bullpen a lot. So having good bullpen pitchers is essential for me. So I definitely want to try all three of these cards out, get them into my bullpen, and see how I fare with them. Number eight, I went with Manny Machado of the Padres. Uh, so he's got 109-111 versus righties, 116-120 versus lefties. So he's going to be able to mash versus all sides, uh, which is a big plus. 96 fielding, 99 arm. So from third base and shortstop, he's going to have no problem throwing guys out, even the speedier guys. Uh, 46 speed. It's kind of slow. Uh, definitely brings this card down a little bit. But I think I want to get this card in a third base, try it out, see how it plays. It looks like um, in terms of the splits, you know, this card's going to hit very well. So interested to hear again if you guys have this card, how it plays for you. Number nine, I'm going with Mookie Betts, right fielder for the Dodgers. Uh, this card, uh, great righty splits. Pretty poor lefty splits, 121-125 versus righties. And uh, the reason why, you know, I have this card ranked high is because I think the righty splits are more important than the lefty splits. Uh, I think you face righties, you know, maybe three out of every four at-bats. Um, then you have really great fielding stats. Uh, 72 speed, 87 steal. I don't think you're going to be stealing with this card, but speed is definitely usable. Uh, I think the reason why this card is ranked a little bit higher up is because of that second base secondary position i think in terms of the outfield this card wouldn't play but i think uh considering this card can play second base um you know definitely makes it a contender to play um personally i would use rogers hornsby over this card because you get very similar righty splits um with better lefty splits and i don't think having those high fielding stats are that important from second base um, and you get 70 speed with Hornsby, which is very similar to Mookie's 72. Um, so I'm interested to hear, you know, do you, a lot of people I see using this card. Um, you know, if you have this card, are you using it? What do you think of it? Uh, would you start this card over, say, Rogers Hornsby or even Tatis at his secondary position or or uh, Honus Wagner? I don't, I don't think I would personally, but um, I know a lot of people like this card, so that's why he's here. 
Number 10, I have Salvador Perez of the Royals. Uh, great righty splits at 125, 112. I think the lefty contact is a little lower than you would like at 88. Definitely in the higher difficulties, you're going to struggle with this card a little bit. I think this card gets a little bit of a boost because of the fact that it's at the catcher position. Um, there aren't that many good catcher cards. I'm currently rocking Jimmy Fox. A lot of people like that Jimmy Fox card. I've found that I struggle with it for some reason. I just I can't hit with his stance. I don't know what it is. Uh, let me know what you think of Jimmy Fox if you're rocking with that card. Uh, would you use Jimmy Fox over Salvador Perez or even some people I know still use Biggio? Um, I still have Biggio as kind of a backup on my bench. Um, you know, 32 speed, really slow, uh, borderline unusable in my opinion. But um, I'm, I'm thinking of trying this card. Like I said, I'm struggling with Jimmy Fox. I'm looking for options at the catcher position. May give this card a shot. Number 11, we have Giovanni Gallegos, uh, relief pitcher for the Cardinals. Uh, so you're getting good uh, per nines, 124 hit per nine, 122 K per nine, 91 walks per nine, 89 controls, pretty good, 84 velo, little on the slower side with 99 break. Uh, so you're only getting four pitches there highlighted by the slider. Um, problem with this card that people have pointed out is the speed differentials. You really only got two speeds, you know, that 85, 86 range with the slider changeup and then 94 uh, with the four seamer and sinker. So you would like to see a fifth pitch. Um, you know, maybe you would like to see a bit of a faster uh, four-seamer to kind of get a better uh, speed differential. A lot of people say that this card is going to get lit up. Uh, pitching, again, is a kind of preferential thing a little bit. You know, you got to get the card into your pen, try and use them, see how you play with them. So, again, I'm interested to hear if you guys have used this card. Is it good, bad? I think the other relievers that I mentioned earlier are better than this card, which is why I rated them. Higher. Number 12, I went with Kyle Tucker of the Houston Astros, uh, left fielder. He's got pretty good uh, splits versus righties at 106.94. Uh, lefty splits are a little low with that 88 contact. Uh, Going to be harder on higher difficulties to hit with that 88 uh, contact versus lefties. Um, but I think he's got pretty well-rounded splits overall. Uh, decent uh, stealing and speed at 83 and 80. Good fielding, 88-83 uh, arm. Um, you know, I think this card is kind of yeah, a bit of a jack-of-all-trades, master of none. I kind of tend to like these cards. He's kind of like a mantle trout where he's kind of, you know, pretty good overall at everything. Um, he's definitely not as good as those cards, but he kind of is shaped in that mold. So I'm interested to see if anyone's used this card, what they think of it. I don't know if I would start this card on my team, but I'd be interested maybe to try it, see how it plays. Number 13, I went with Shane Beaver of the Cleveland Indians. Uh, so pretty good per nines, 112 stamina, 120 hit per nine, 125 K per nine, uh, 83 walks per nine, 88 control, 74 velo, 99 break. Uh, velo is a little low. I tend to like to pitch with high velo pitchers personally. I typically, I'm not, I'm not amazing at this game, I typically play on around All-Star, and I feel like people at that difficulty level typically have problems with the VLO. Um, you know, I don't think you need high VLO to be a successful pitcher, but again, the differentials aren't amazing. 94 on the four-seamer, 90 cutter, uh, 86 changeup, so not as high of a speed differential as you would like. All of his pitches are kind of around the same speed, and uh, no sinker. Sinker is kind of that number one pitch that you like to see. Um, so don't think I'll be using this card, but I'm interested to hear if anybody has used it, what they think of it. So number 14, Lords Goriel Jr. of the Blue Jays. Uh, what jumps out to me at this card is the secondary positions. Um, you don't actually don't get center field, which I think is a little weird. Um, but you do get second, third, short, right, and his primary position of left field. Um, so you do like that versatility to be able to play this card kind of all around the diamond. Uh, pretty good splits, 123 uh, contact versus right, 99 power, 102 contact versus left, and 93 power. Uh, you know, 85 fielding, 81 arm with the 56 speed, I think is a little slow. Um, this is just a case of where I think the outfield is pretty loaded in terms of your mantles, trouts, cobs, griffies, sotos. I don't think this card would start in your outfield over any of those cards. Um, maybe you could play this card at second base. But again, you know, it comes back to even at second base, you have cards like Rogers Hornsby. You could play Tatis or Wagner at their secondary positions. Um, do you start this card over that over those cards? I don't think you do either. 
So this card is just running low because I just don't see using this card. Kind of around this range is where you kind of get towards the cards that I don't really see you using. Um, at least not starting on your team. So, uh, yep. So I'm going to kind of gloss over this card and keep moving. Number 15, DJ LeMahieu of the Yankees at second base. This card is tough because as a Yankees fan, you know, I want to be able to rate this card high. But I just don't think it's deserving of it. Um, good splits versus righties, 125, 108 power. Uh, but the problem comes with the 125 78 power versus lefties, which is below that 80 threshold for the perfect, perfect home run. Uh, you could try and prestige this card and get it over 80 and you would solve that problem. But uh, would you use this card enough to get to that point? I don't think so. Uh, this comes down to, again, uh, good versatility, but the problem is the arm. Uh, you don't really want to have a 61 arm at shortstop. Especially with that 43 speed, you're going to have a problem throwing guys out, getting the balls in the gaps. Uh, I just think this card is not good enough. I mean, even a card like Hornsby, he's got better arm, better speed, uh, you know, better power versus left. I just don't see using this card, you know, again, Tatis, Wagner at their secondary positions at second base. I don't see using this card over those cards. So, again, my ratings were based off of how the game is in its current state, would I use this card? I think the answer is no. I don't think you would. Um, so that's why it's lower up on the list. Number 16 on the list is Nelson Cruz. Uh, he's got pretty good, you know, hitting stats. Uh, the problem is his worst hitting stat is arguably one of the more important ones at 92 contact versus right. Definitely lower than you would like that to be. I think this card is just not as good of a Juan Soto. Uh, Juan Soto, you're getting that 125 contact versus right. You're going to get a much bigger PCI with a card like Juan Soto. Uh, you know, Juan Soto is not amazing fielding stats, but they're definitely better than Nelson Cruz with that 32 speed in the outfield. He's basically going to be like a statue out there. Um, so I think this is just a worse version of Soto. I would definitely pick Soto over this card. Um, I think you could definitely use this card as a platoon uh, bench bat with the 125, 125 versus left. Uh, but there's quite a few cards that have 125, 125 versus left. One of them being Mondesi with 99 speed. Um, so I don't see... Maybe you could use this card off your bench, but uh, definitely not good enough to start. So number 17, we have Kyle Lewis of the Mariners. So pretty good variety splits at 108, 104. Uh, 87 contact versus left is lower than you would like. Um, but you are going to face righties more, so it's not as important. But the problem is on the higher difficulties, uh, 87 contact isn't really going to cut it. Um, you know, pretty good fielding stats, 69 speed, usable but not great. Um, this just comes down to, again, the outfield is pretty loaded um, with all the cards I've, I've previously mentioned. You know, Mantle, Trout, Cobb, Griffey, uh, Soto, all these guys. I don't see starting this card over those cards and I don't even think uh, the card is necessarily good enough to platoon because um, you know there's so many cards uh, you know 125 125 versus one side of the plate that I just don't even see platooning this card so I that's why it's pretty low up on the list so next up at number 18 Trevor Story of the Rockies so this is an interesting card um, you know, based off of what we've been saying, the 97-81 splits versus righties, that's the side that you want to be really good. Um, and it's the worst side for Trevor Story. So I think that those splits versus righties are just too low for a starting card on my team at this point in the year. Um, you know, you could have a card like Tatis. Uh, way better card. Way better splits versus righties. Um, 123, 120 splits versus lefties is good, but as we said, we prefer the righty splits. Great fielding at 90 fielding, 95 arm, 85 speed, 99 stealing. So you could potentially steal a base with this card. Um, but I, again, the righty splits are just too low for me to want to use this card. If the splits were switched and you had the 123, 120 righties, maybe you could use this card, but... Um, I think the, the righty splits are just too low. Number 19 on the list, we have Freddie Freeman of the Braves. Um, this might be controversial. A lot of people seem to like this card, uh, but I don't because, you know, he does have the 125, 117 splits versus righties, which is great. 86 and 81, even though it's lefty, I think it's just too low. And, you know, you have cards like Ruth and Garrett where you have over 100 
and all of the hitting stats at first base. Uh, why would you play this card over those cards? I don't think you would. Uh, you know, maybe this is a good platoon option to have versus righties. Um, but, you know, he's got the 92 fielding, which is good. But I don't think you need it at first base. I have Ruth at first base. Uh, I think he plays the position just fine. And even Babe Ruth has 60 speed, which isn't great, but it's definitely better than 44. Um, so I just don't see playing this card over Babe Ruth. I think Babe Ruth plays first base really well. He hits a lot of dingers. I just don't see a need to play this card. Next up at number 20, I have Tim Anderson of the White Sox. Uh, so this is just, again, a problem with the righty splits. Uh, 109 contact versus right, but that's 79 power below the 80 threshold that you're looking for. Even at this point of the year versus righties, I'm definitely not looking to be just at 80. Uh, I'm looking to be over 100 versus righties. Um, you know, this is just an example of where Tatis is just better. Um, you know, he's got way better righty splits with the same exact speed, better stealing. So you can steal a base for Tatis where you couldn't with this card. And that 74 arm, it's, you know, on the dangerously low side. Um, so it does have great lefty splits, 125, 125. But again, we prefer those righty splits. Uh, I just don't see using this card over the better options that are currently available. Number 21, I have Sander Bogarts of the Red Sox. So, again, righty splits, not as good as they need to be. I think both of those at this point in the year should be over 100. Neither of them are. Uh, 125, 112, good lefty splits, but not even as good as Tim Anderson. And only 68 speed is not as good as Tim Anderson either. Uh, so I think Tim Anderson is just a slightly better uh, version of this card. So I put him a little bit lower. So at number 22, I have JT Realmuto of the Phillies. Uh, that uh, highlighting stat, that 85 contact versus right is just too low. Um, you know, 112 power will do the job. 125 contact left, but only 91 power, I think, is too low as well. Uh, great fielding stats, good arm blocking, all of that stuff. 75 speed is definitely decent for the catcher position. Uh, but this is just a case of where you have Salvador Perez, who I think is better uh, in terms of his righty splits. You have, you know, Jimmy Fox or even Craig Biggio, I think, are better than this card. Uh, so I just wouldn't play this card over the better options that are available. So at number 23, we have Mike Yastrzemski of the Giants. Uh, this is just another example where outfield is so stacked at this point of the year that I just don't see playing this card over the other options that are available. Uh, only 89 power versus righties is too low. Um, so, yeah, I just wouldn't play this card. 71 arm is kind of like a noodle. 63 speed is definitely usable, but not not great. So, definitely wouldn't use this card. At number 24, we have Zach Gallen of the Diamondbacks. Uh, splits are, not splits, uh, per nines are decent. Uh, 108 stamina, 108 hit per nine, 105 K per nine, 78 walks per nine is a little low. Decent control at 85, 81 velo, 97 break. Uh, pitch repertoire is not amazing. He does have the sinker, mid-90s fastball, uh, you know, change-up, knuckle curve. I think this is a better version of one of the cards we'll talk about in a minute, but not super amazing. So at number 25, we have Lance Lynn of the Texas Rangers. Uh, per nines are a little bit lower than you like at 106 and 96, K per nine. Uh, 79 control, I think, is a little too low. I think you're going to have difficulties locating. Uh, with this card and the 83 velo 91 break don't really make up for the low control um not you know decent differentials at 96 uh fastball with the 83 change up but i just think you know this card's gonna get lit up or if you can hit the zone you might walk too many guys to get lit up at number 26 i have david fletcher of the angels uh good positional versatility with this card you can play most of the infield and a good portion of the outfield um, but 65 power is just too low for me at this point of the year. Uh, great contact, great fielding, but um, for me, I'd personally rather have good contact and power than good fielding. I don't think fielding is as, as important as power, in my opinion. And he doesn't even have, you know, good contact, good speed. Um, this card is unusable, in my personal opinion. Number 27, Jaimir Candelario of the Tigers. Uh, 99 hit, uh, contact versus right, 87 power. Uh, for a first base card, you know, their main responsibility is to be that slugger in the middle of your lineup. This card's not going to do it with 87 power. I think that's too low versus righties at this point in the year for a first baseman whose job is basically to 
be that power hitter, you definitely want that to be over 100. Uh, both of those righty splits. Um, so, you know, better lefty splits is not going to make up for the uh, deficit there in the righty splits. So at number 28, we have Jacob Stallings of the Pirates. Uh, catcher, you know, that 87-84. Like we were just saying with uh, Kendall Ario, those are too low. Uh, fielding is good, but uh, I don't care too much about fielding at the catcher position. Uh, 29 speed is very slow. That's not going to get the job done for you. Um, so all of the things that I like out of a card are not here with this one. So At number 29, Anthony Santander of the Orioles. Uh, good righty splits, 102-115, but that 69 contact versus left, even though you're not going to be facing lefties that often, I think that contact versus left rating is way too low. Uh, you're not going to be able to get many hits with this card versus lefties on those higher difficulties. And it doesn't make up for it with the speed. So I just don't think this card is... I think it's definitely the worst outfield card of the mix. Um, way better cards available. Um, even out in this uh, set, not even accounting for the other cards that are currently available. And last but not least, we have Miguel Rojas of the Marlins. Uh, definitely the worst card out of this set. Uh, 85 contact right, 75 power versus right. Uh, is way too low. Um, he does have those better lefty splits, but they're not good enough to justify the righty splits. Uh, 95 fielding is good, but 71 arm is too low. Uh, you're going to have some trouble throwing guys out. And 52 speed definitely doesn't help make up for all the other deficits in this card. Um, just play Tatis or any other card at shortstop over this one. Uh, you know, even I don't think the shortstop options were amazing in this uh, set, but I think even all the other ones are better than this. Um, definitely not really many redeeming factors for this card. Uh, definitely... Uh, uh, don't go after this card. So that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. If you like this video, uh, be sure to leave a like and a subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. And uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.